Okay, you're right. Let's go over the answers for this activity. So to remind you, you were asked to note down or print out this sheet. If you haven't been able to print it, you should have the numbers one to eight uh, with these assignations, so dogs, cockerel, etc. And some explanation. And I asked you specifically to comment on a keyword, why it matters to Napoleon or how it makes him look. And we went through the first one together in the last video. So a retinue, I picked out here this keyword retinue, group of people who follow an important person so it shows that Napoleon is really powerful. So let's have a look at this cockerel. So cockerel, male hen, fabulous tail feathers. Well, Napoleon has a black cockerel who marched in front of him and acted as a kind of trumpeter, letting out a loud cock a doodle doo before Napoleon spoke. So what keywords could we pick out here? So I've got picked out the fact that he's a cockerel, because I think that's meant to be for a showy animal, and marched as well. So that shows that he's kind of strutting, but also it suggests um, uh, military, the military. And do you know, Stalin used to have military personnel, armed guards marching around to make him look really important and powerful as well. So I've picked out here the word marched suggests the military the cockerel shows napoleon's pride and status now you might have also talked about how he wants everybody to look at him because he's got the loud noise or maybe you talked about um uh the fact that it's a cockerel and it's really <clears throat> showy and proud of its feathers all of those be great answers so if you've got the idea of marched and the status or showy or look at me give yourself a tick with purple pen and you could always add to the ideas that you did have next one is the fact that he lives separately so even in the farmhouse it was said napoleon inhabited separate apartments from the others what does that show us about him well living apart could be part of napoleon's cult of personality it conveys using different words for shows okay but it's the same thing that he is special and maybe perfect he can't sleep with the rest of the pigs because he's a very special pig that's the idea seems to slightly go in the face of all animals are equal which is the first tenet of animalism okay the next one was um oh, was uh, that he eats separately number four he took his meals alone with two dogs to wait upon him and always ate from the crown derby dinner service which had been in the glass cupboard in the drawing room now crown derby is expensive bone china made in britain and we know it's fancy because it's kept in a glass cupboard in the drawing room and if it's in a glass cupboard that means you want people to see what's inside the cupboard because you're trying to show off so I've picked out those bits as my special quotes. So I've said, this special china shows that he is like an important guest at every dinner. And the glass cupboard is where it was kept, which meant it's meant to show off wealth. Mm. So Napoleon wants to look wealthy. Okay, give us off a tick if you picked up on those ideas. Birthday celebrations. Okay, Napoleon is so special, everybody has to celebrate his birthday with gunfire every year on his birthday as well as the other two anniversaries. Now I wonder if you picked up on which anniversaries these are. They're actually the two battles that they fought. Um, one to keep the farm and one the day that they were first liberated, so effectively um, the October Revolution and the Russian Civil War, if you want to look back to real history. So what does that show us? Well, the gun is another symbol of status, military might, the fact that you can fire a gun, um, and power. It also links Napoleon to their previous military victories and the idea of animalism. So he's become bound to those previous successful battles and the farm itself. So celebrating his birthday as if he is the most special part of Animal Farm. Interesting. Okay, number six is titles. So Napoleon is always referred to in formal style as our leader, Comrade Napoleon. And the pigs like to invent for him such titles as father of all animals, terror of mankind, protector of the sheepfold, duckling's friend, and the like. 
So I've picked out these words. I've picked out father, terror, protector, and duckling's friend. Because I thought they were the most interesting words. And actually, they're all emotive words. Do you remember we talked about that a couple of times in persuasive writing? They're all emotive words, emotive titles. And they show Napoleon's appealing side, father, protector, friend, oh, duckling's friend, as well as his scary side, because he's the terror of mankind. So my two inferences there are that he comes across as so appealing, rather like these lovely glowy people over here who are literally the sunrise, um, but also whoa, really scary if you're humans, a little bit more like Gaddafi's insistence on being the man who will crush any military who comes against him. That's what I've picked up there. Give yourself a tick if you feel you've made a valid answer to that or something similar. And the next one is the songs about him. Thou watchest over all, comrade Napoleon, thou art the giver of all that thy creatures love. And I picked out some funny words here, watchest, giver of all, thy and uh, they are words they are just really old-fashioned words in fact another word for them is archaic and you might think about traditional hymns these songs they actually he's made them sound a bit old-fashioned George Orwell because I think he wants us to think of hymns they're a bit like um what you'd sing in a really traditional church on a Sunday morning and they imply another word for show or convey they imply Napoleon should be worshipped because he's really special. Look at what they're saying. He watches over all like a protector, like a father, like a friend, but also like a god, like he's all knowing. And of course, with his secret sneaky dogs and Squeed of the Pig listening out, he really does try and watch over everything, but in a slightly scary way. And the giver of all thy creatures love, that makes him the creator, the provider, he's literally casting himself as God in this situation. Um, she's quite common in a dictator because they feel like they alone lead their people. And uh, so if you've got something similar to that, give yourself a tick. And the final one, number eight, is the picture painted of him. On the wall of the big barn, a portrait of Napoleon in profile, executed by Squealer in white print. Now in profile means that it's from the side angle, so you see his little little snout, his head, his ear, from from the side. Like you would get on a coin, you get a person's head in profile on a coin. And it's a sign that they're really distinctive, that we should recognise them. So a big picture of Napoleon's face, because it's as big as the Ten Commandments, it literally takes up the whole side of the barn, um, shows how he as a pig is as important as the commandments of animalism. So it's his persona, his person, his character that's as important as animalism or the commandments. That's what I think it shows. You might want to pick out the fact that he must be special to have a portrait made of him. Maybe that he wants to be remembered. I think with a lot of these pictures and statues, he wants to be there forever. But of course, no pig and no human lives forever. So you might pick up on that idea as well. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed the activity. And overall, you can see that um, Napoleon, as a representation of the real person in history, Joseph Stalin, has used lots of different means to create this cult of personality. And cleverly, George Orwell uses lots of emotive words, he uses lots of symbols, and uh, references to other events like the anniversaries to show us um, just who Napoleon is and how he wants the other animals to see him and to treat him.